of, uh, of your package in a different way, but as essentially the tips should be uh, valid for, for any kind of project. Uh, on my next slide, you can see the, this is my company, uh, Artichok, we are based in uh, Slovakia. So as the presentation said, uh, we're doing all kinds of projects, but um, I'm right now in production with two uh, animated feature films, which is kind of a big thing for even for, for, for the country, because we don't, we don't do uh, that much uh, large animation projects. My first um, experience with animation was, um, or first really successful experience with animation was a short film by Hungarian director Luca Tot. Next slide uh, shows the, the poster of it, Superbia, which uh, was selected in, in Cannes. Uh, and on my next slide, you see uh, my current project, uh, White Plastic Sky, which is also done by Hungarian directors. It's a co-production with, uh, with Hungary, between Hungary and Slovakia. It's a 2D, 3D animated film, feature film for adults. It's a, it's a sci-fi uh, movie. I will be speaking a little bit, uh, giving you examples uh, from this movie during the presentation today. On the next slide, you can see some images from the movie, um, which is mixing uh, the 2D and 3D animated te technique. And uh, actually we find, um, we found a nice way uh, of separating the workflow between two countries. Uh, Hungary is doing everything that is 2D, uh, Slovakia is doing everything that is 3D, and then we are putting it together. On the next slide, you can see uh, some, some example of, uh, of, uh, of a finished, uh, how it will look like in the, in the finished film. And my other project on the next slide uh, is um, puppet stop motion uh, animation for children called uh, of unwanted things and people it's based on a book of short stories by a czech writer his name is arnold goldflam so this is how the final look of the film will will look like with the with the puppets uh, on the next slide you can see the structure of the of the film uh, which includes three different stories and um, and uh, on the next slide you can see um, these are the, the, this is the art design by a uh, Spanish uh, art designer, Patricia Ortiz Martinez. So this is uh, a little bit how, how we work and uh, how, the, how the film will, will look like. These sets on the next slide also are being uh, made right now. The shooting will start uh, in, in January. So this is a puppet stop motion for children. I will be giving examples during this presentation from, from both these movies. And another one produced by a, by a friend. Uh, I will tell you when it when the time comes. Uh, so I just hope that um, you will you will take something from this presentation that can be really practical for you and that you can start to to apply basically immediately on uh, on your projects. Uh, and uh, I will be also happy to answer your questions at the end. So let's start with the with the presentation on the next slide. Uh, basically. The theme will be packaging and pitching. I will be more speaking about packaging, but uh, but pitching is uh, is something that is related uh, to it, and that comes for me after the work of packaging. After you have prepared all the material that you will need during the presentation of your movie, when you will be looking for partners, uh, when you will be traveling around the world, and basically as your as your project will be evolving. Uh, I know that there is another session on pitching, so. Um, I will not go too much deep into, into the practice of pitching as you have this other session uh, about it. On my next slide uh, comes a kind of an obvious uh, statement, but um, it's good to, to, to repeat it and to always um, remind yourself about, about this. The purpose of a film in development is to one day go in production. That's, that's your basic goal. This is what you are doing especially as a producer, this is what you are uh, looking for. And every element uh, of your work, every element of um, the presentation packages you are preparing and, and so on, has this aim of one, get, one day getting your project into production. On my next slide, uh, you see that the basic element that you need for this is the production package. Uh, on my next slide, 
I, I wanted to highlight the fact that from the production package, you adapt it to different um, variations that you can need in different situations. And pitch is just one of the variations of how you basically with words and images uh, translate the content of your production package. Uh, so basically what your film, the production and everything is about. But one very important thing I want to underline uh, from the beginning on my next slide is that every time that you are presenting your production package, that you are presenting your film, anytime that you are pitching your project, you are actually presenting yourself. This is extremely important that uh, people in, in, uh, in different markets and, and pitching forums and so on, when they look for projects, they look for partners to, to, be, to be working with, you know, an animation project can take easily three, four, five, even seven years to, to be made. So everyone who is looking for partners, anyone who is considering you uh, to enter your project, to be working with you, is actually also evaluating, do I want to work with this person? Um, does it look uh, like, like something that, you know, for five, uh, five years we will be working together? Um, what is the working standard of, the, of this person? How, how does this person work with other people? And so on and so on. So don't forget that each time you're presenting your work, you are also presenting yourself, building your reputation, um, building your professional appearance. On my next slide is the complete list of what I will be talking about today. Uh, I will I will come back to it, so you don't need to note it down or something. I I think the uh, also the session will be recorded, so you can if you if you need to copy these things uh, later. Uh, but this is the complete list, and now I will go one by one uh, through this list uh, and showing you some examples of uh, what such uh, a package should uh, should look like and what it should uh, contain. So on my next slide, we will start with the cover page. Of course. Um, if you prepare this uh, only in an electronical version to to send it to someone or or you actually print it uh, to have it to have it with you the the package always contains the cover page uh, where you try to as much as possible uh, have um, an accurate visual of your project uh, of course in different stages when you are really at the beginning of your project you will not have your final visuals which is absolutely normal but but you need to choose uh, something that conveys uh, the idea of your project the emotion the color the the style uh, and so on um, the cover page should contain of course um, you know the title of the project don't forget the logos of uh, the institutions or partners that already have supported you uh, this is really very important and it helps you to to, to build a good relationship with uh, institutions when you, you know, when you acknowledge them by, by showing uh, their logo on the front page. Often you also might want to say on the front page, um, put your contact there so that people immediately see uh, your contact. And also it might be useful to, to say what the project actually is. You might, I mean, if it's a TV series, you can write that it's a TV series or if it's a feature film animated, just write this, uh, you know, very basic information if it's not completely obvious from uh, from the image. On my next slide, uh, this would be the, um, you know, the first uh, or second page in your in your package. Uh, you can include um, a content list uh, with uh, with page numbers so that people can uh, can navigate more easily in your document. Uh, on my next page, uh, this would be um, this would be the next element that should be included. Uh, a facts sheet, uh, which has all the information about what kind of project it is, who um, who stands behind the project, uh, you know, director, scriptwriter, producer. Uh, what is the length? What is the what is the format? Uh, what is the genre? Um, what is um, maybe even the expected uh, release date and so on. This is this is a lot of information that that you want to uh, fill in the reader uh, as soon as possible so that people you know, understand what kind of project uh, you are doing. Uh, on my next page, uh, next slide, sorry. On the next slide, uh, you see uh, an example of um, my project for, for children, this puppet stop motion animation of unwanted things and people. Um, in one stage of our development, this was the, this was the production package that we had. 
um, it's uh, it doesn't need to be uh, you know it doesn't need to be super professionally done by uh, by a graphist uh, and so on because most of the time um, the package that I'm speaking about uh, today it will be most of the time the producer who will be uh, doing it um, changing the information quite often as um, as the project evolves as soon as you have new partners uh, you need to basically change the uh, the package to include them and so on so so this is really a live document and uh, for this reason it's most of the times uh, the producer who is uh, doing it and for this reason uh, most of the time it doesn't need to look uh, super professionally uh, as you can as you can see this one is not uh, uh, extremely um, visually inventive but um, it's the information that is uh, that is important so on a summary page or uh, as I call it here or a fact sheet you would uh, you know include the names of the of the principal uh, crew involved uh, on the project on my next um, slide I show you an example from another movie uh, produced by um, uh, by a fellow uh, producer uh, Ole Wendorf Ostergaard it's a film that was released in 2016 uh, called Another Day of Life. Uh, it's also an animation. I will be showing a few examples from this film also. Here you can see uh, their fact sheet, how it looked in a certain stage of their, of their project when they didn't even have the final visual uh, of the poster or, or even actually a precise idea on the visual of the film. Uh, so this is what they used and on the next slide you can see uh, how how that same package evolved once the film was finished uh, and this package was prepared by a professional uh, graphist it was prepared by the sales agent actually uh, so so it could already look uh, completely different on the next slide you see the the fact sheet uh, next slide please yeah, here you can see uh, the, the 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 fact sheet. Once the film already had the final visuals and uh, and and everything was in place, so so it looked uh, already much more professional. Okay, so so these are on the next slide, please. These are the the, the first elements of your package, and of course, one of the most important things that uh, that enters actually that that helps uh, your reader your future partners or anyone who takes your project in your hands uh, that helps them to enter uh, in, in the world of your film is the synopsis. Um, this, is, this, is, this is the entrance uh, door uh, and I will, I will spend a little bit more time uh, on uh, now explaining you how the synopsis is written and, and, and what kind of information it could uh, or should uh, include. On the next slide you see that uh, first of all you need to next please uh, you need to uh, think about um, how to communicate your your project in terms of um, of story basically you need to tell a story this is what uh, what all the people in the indus industry are, are, are for they want to uh, tell stories so you need to think about how to communicate your film and you can think about it in the same way as you think about your favorite movie and how you would tell it to your friend. Uh, most of the times you, you don't actually remember uh, the details of the plot. You, you would probably um, know only you know, how to tell your favorite movie only in very broad general terms like what were the characters and what kind of happened to them but not in exact order of the plot and, uh, and so on. And, and this is basically how you need to how you need to learn to communicate your own film. Uh, you need to communicate the emotion that uh, people will have when they will watch the film. Uh, very important on the next slide, I have put that you need to be concise. You need to be uh, as, you know, as, as direct, as concise, as short as possible, because the people you are communicating with uh, on the international market, um, basically what, what is really um, um, uniting all of them, uh, no matter the continent or the, the, the genre or, you know, the industry they are working in, is that they don't have time uh, or, or, or time is very precious for them. So you need to be with your package as concise or with your, with your synopsis also as concise as possible. And on the, yes, so let's, uh, let's move to the next slide. 
and I'm I'm going to uh, to show you uh, how to how to write the synopsis. So next slide, please. And next slide. The first uh, element you want to include in your synopsis uh, is to convey a feeling. Uh, this should be the feeling that uh, the audience will be having when they will be watching uh, your, your film. On next slide, I have put that um, the important information to set up uh, from the beginning of your synopsis uh, is to set up the time, place and the rules of the universe. Uh, by this, I mean that if you um, if your project uh, is set in, let's say, Manila, uh, it's not the same uh, if you say uh, Manila today, uh, Manila mm, uh, 2036 or Manila 16th century. Uh, immediately when I read uh, Manila 16th century, uh, I have a completely different image of the rules of the, of the universe. Uh, and, and also the, the setting, the, the, the look of the film, and so on. So setting up the time, place, and rules of the universe is extremely important, and especially in, in projects um, such as uh, sci-fi. This, uh, this will be a, a big part of your, of your synopsis to, to, to set up the rules of the universe in a sci-fi movie. Uh, on the next slide, you see that um, you, you need to introduce your main characters. This is, this is what uh, films are about. This is what people are there uh, to, to, to see stories of, of characters, of people. And next slide, um, what we are interested in stories is, of course, the conflict of the main characters. What is, what is that happens to them? Then, uh, next slide, you will include in the synopsis a short description of the plot, so what happens in the film. But um, I want to explain you that uh, it's very important in a synopsis, but also in a pitch, uh, to, to spend as little time as possible on the actual plot. So you will spend much more time saying what the characters are and, and what the time and place and rules of the universe are uh, than you will be actually saying what is happening to them in, in the movie. On the next slide, uh, comes maybe to some of you a surprising information, uh, but also I want to be very clear on this, that uh, in, a, in a business world where you speak to future partners, uh, you need to include your ending in the synopsis. This is very, very important. Um, so on my next slide, uh, I want to show you a little bit more this information about the plot that I was telling you that um, you, you, you spend as little time as possible. So in terms of the structure of your synopsis, let's say that you are writing it on one page, uh, you will be spending probably half of the page uh, on explaining the world, the universe, the characters, rules, emotion, uh, the tone of the film, the conflict and so on. Basically what happens in the first 10 or 20 minutes of your film uh, on, on, your, on your page of your synopsis, this will, this will represent probably 50% of that page then uh, this is what we call the, the act one in a three act uh, structure. Um, the next slide, here I show that um, what is actually the action of the film, you will try to spend as little time as possible because um, it's, it, it's uh, and especially in a, in, a, in a pitched situation when you are actually telling this story to, to somebody, uh, the, the, the capacity to, to concentrate on a story uh, for a listener is, is, is very limited and actually it's even good not to tell them too much because um, you can work with the imagination of the people if you, if you rather describe them the world and the universe, the characters, the emotions, then their brain starts to um, you know, generate images and stories and, and, and this is actually even better than, than telling them exactly what, what happens. And on my next slide you see that then the, the final uh, part of the, um, uh, of the synopsis, uh, also a, a big chunk, um, big, big part, would be something like 40% of your page. There you, you tell the resolution, the crisis, the climax, the final, the ending of your film. And it is important also that, uh, to understand that it's from the ending of films that we understand the theme of the films, what it is really about. What, you are trying to say what you are trying to convey. On my next slide, uh, I want to explain you this uh, this idea of of why you should uh, write or pitch endings of your stories 
in a situation when you are talking to business partners. So this is the difference between a situation that is called B2B or business to business as compared to a situation that is called B2C, business to client. So business to business uh, is, is really what we are doing most of the times when we go to markets uh, and so on. Uh, business to client, this is when you are uh, pitching your story or telling your story to your future viewers. And in such a situation, you just want to tease them. Uh, you, you just want to, you know, you don't want to reveal them the ending because you, you want them to watch your film. Uh, so on my on my next slide, I, I wanted to give you a, a, an example of a, of a pitch uh, of a of a story. So how how I would um, tell the story of White Plastic Sky. So basically, uh, it's it's um, it's a world in in 100 years from now. Uh, the soil has completely disappeared. Flora and fauna died, and the last piece of uh, civilization. Where, uh, lives in the city of Budapest, today's Hungary, under a plastic dome that covers the city and uh, that protects the city from the from the desert outside. And the rule of the society is that um, the only food that is available on the next slide is uh, is a plant, a transgenic plant uh, that is very nutritious. But um, the problem is that as there is no soil, the plant only grows in human bodies. So uh, the consensus in this world is that uh, on the day people reach the age of 50, uh, they are transported to, to a remote place called the plantation and they are uh, implanted with the seed and the, and, and the tree basically grows uh, inside uh, their bodies. And um, those trees only, um, they are not allowed to, to blossom because they, they, are, they are poisonous once they, they blossom. On the next slide, these are my main characters, um, Stefan and Nora. Stefan is a 28-year-old uh, psychologist who helps uh, people to accept the rules of uh, this world. And uh, Nora is a 32-year-old um, wife of, uh, uh, of Stefan. We don't get much time to, to learn who exactly she is because the film opens up when she goes for a voluntary implantation. Uh, the reason for it is that uh, she cannot cope uh, with the death of uh, of her baby child uh, a few years ago, and, and and this is why basically she commits suicide through going to this voluntary implantation. So on the next slide, you see that she is uh, transported to this uh, secret place called the plantation, where in a few days she will transform uh, into into a tree that you can see on the next slide. Uh, this is a visualization of how uh, the people are transformed into the trees. But uh, Stefan cannot accept that uh, she will she will not be there anymore. So he decides to save her. Uh, he sneaks into the plantation. He manages to kidnap her. And actually, the only way to save her is to go to a secret remote place through the desert, a place called the Granum, uh, which is actually the research center where this uh, plant was first found. Uh, he only has five days to get there because the plant is already growing inside uh, her body. On the next slide, uh, this is a this is one uh, image from from the journey. They they go through the desert, uh, through the destroyed cities and uh, the land uh, that is completely void of uh, any life, and they arrive at the at the granum, which is the next uh, slide, which is the research uh, center uh, in the in the mountains. And there, uh, they actually find no one. The, the experiences where uh, the research was stopped uh, a few years ago, because um, because what they found was very dangerous. They found that uh, actually the plant could uh, reproduce itself, and uh, people would wouldn't need to be killed. Uh, but uh, actually, the the plant, as it would blossom uh, into trees and reproduce. Uh, the poisonous leaves would, would actually kill the humanity. Um, they only find uh, a mad professor inside there who is actually the, the author of the, of the plant. And after a discussion with him, uh, Stefan understands what Nora understood since a long time, that life uh, living in, in this uh, world is completely meaningless. Like living in a world without nature is completely meaningless. So he decides to implant himself with the plant also, instead of saving Nora, he implants himself. And uh, in a final, um, in a grand finale, uh, the, the, the granum is destroyed. And on the last slide, next slide, please. 
you see how uh, Stefan and Nora implanted with the plant the, the seed. Uh, they find a, a quiet place in the mountains next to a lake where they decide to just lie down and uh, transform into trees. The first two trees that will be allowed to blossom, to reproduce and eventually restart nature on planet Earth. So next slide, you see um, this is how the synopsis on one page would uh, would look like. This is the this is the pitch that I, I have given you. You see, it's uh, structured in in three parts. I encourage you to uh, to structure your synopsis uh, to help the reader to structure it in these three parts. Uh, you see that the, the the biggest part, the beginning, is the um, the setting up of the universe, while the shortest part uh, is the is the action uh, of the of the film. On the next slide. Um, I wanted to, to speak about the fact that once you have this synopsis, let's say that you will write your synopsis uh, on, on one page, uh, you will need to adapt it for different situations that you will uh, encounter. For example, uh, when you will be asked to, to fill in information for um, an international market or or workshop or a pitching forum or, or, or whatever, um, you will be asked to, to write it in 600 characters, for example, or 1000 characters or half a page, uh, different, different versions. And you can always start with your one page uh, synopsis that, that, that you can adapt into these smaller versions. Uh, one, one such, um, actually the smallest uh, version of a, of a, of a synopsis that, that you will uh, and count to yourself needing in these situations is a log line, which is uh, actually just one one sentence usually. So I have included two examples. Uh, one famous movie that you will probably recognize, set in Morocco during early days of World War II, an American expatriate meets a former lover with unforeseen complications. Uh, so this is Casablanca, obviously. Uh, and in, I try to write the log line for, for the movie that I just pitched. Um, it, it will be something like Budapest, 100 years from today, a young couple seeks meaning in a world where all fauna and flora has disappeared, provoking dire consequences for what's left of humanity. Um, well, it, you might object that it's probably not the best log line, but uh, um, these, are, these are the variations that, uh, that, that you will need. Uh, also, I want to repeat once again that as your project is evolving, as your writers are, are rewriting different drafts of, uh, of the screenplay, uh, you will be probably uh, needing to adapt your synopsis also most of the times. Uh, it's, uh, so it's a, it's a live document that you, that you always work and rework. Uh, I think it's um, very important that this job be done actually by the producer uh, because um, First of all, you, you don't always have a, a writer ready to to change it every time you need to adapt it for different formats. But also the, the advantage of the producer to, to be writing it is that you get to know uh, what your project really is about by, by, by thinking, by trying to, to tell your story uh, in, in, in as little words uh, and space as possible. You, 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 you boil the ideas down to, you distillate actually the, the, the core idea of your film, you understand it, and then you, you are also more prepared to uh, immediately talk about your project uh, to anyone. So it's, it's kind of important to, for the producer to, to be the one writing this. On my next slide, I move now uh, to uh, another important element of the production package, uh, which is the producer's uh, note of intention. And also on my next slide, uh, the director's note of intention or the writer's note of intention. So one is the, the, the view of the producer and the other one is the, the view of the creative uh, part of the, of the team. I will tell you a little bit more about how to write this uh, notes of intention. Again, it can be one, maximum two pages. Uh, that would be uh, the length of it. On my next slide, I go through the main elements of uh, what a producer's note should uh, include. So first of all, you need to convey uh, what is it about for you as producer. By this, uh, I don't mean uh, saying what the film is about, because you have already said that in the synopsis. But, um, you know, the deeper meaning of, uh, of this film, the importance of the theme, these kind of things, like what the project is for you as a uh, producer and, and why, on the next slide, 
you can see uh, what is your motivation uh, as producer to, to actually do this project uh, and to drive it. On my next slide, um, this is another information that uh, you would need to include is uh, what is your, how do you imagine to finance this, uh, this film? What is your strategy to, to finance it? On my next slide, uh, you see um, some, you would include some information about the, the production. So how you, how you imagine that this film will be produced, where will it be uh, animated or shot? Um, how it will be distributed? Is it a co-production or is it a national production? This kind of information. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so yes, uh, you, you need to say uh, always what is the current status of the project. Um, this again, producers note here, you see that it's again a live document that you keep updating because each time something important happens on your project, for example, you, you receive a, a very important um, you know, part of, uh, of your financing. Uh, this is something that you that you need to say and you need to be completely honest uh, in the in the current status you need to say uh, even if there are problems on your on your project you need to say like uh, these are the problems and this is how we are thinking about solving them uh, on the last slide uh, you might uh, include information about uh, how you plan to distribute this movie um, this would be this would be probably information uh, on on the target audience, like what is who is this film for and how you plan to reach them. On next slide is about uh, the director's note. Um, here I want to underline the fact that uh, in both notes, the, the the producers and also the directors, it's uh, it's always written in a personal I. Uh, you you don't don't write it in a in a we unless. Uh, unless uh, it's signed by two people uh, and you you make clearly the distinction between who speaks when in the text it's always a personal personal note so you write it with an i uh, on the next slide again uh, the director needs to convey uh, mainly the idea why did he or she uh, embark on this project what is what is driving them personally and creatively why do they want to do this film in particular. And on my next slide, this would be another important part of the director's note is, uh, is the answer on, on how, how you as a director uh, want to make this movie. What is the technique and the artistic choices uh, that you have chosen to tell this story? So the director's note is mainly about why and how. Okay, on the next slide, there are a few recommendations that go for both uh, notes of uh, intention. So again, as I was saying, you are writing with a subjective eye. On the next slide, uh, I underline the fact that you are not telling the story, you are not explaining what the film is about. Uh, it, you need to, to say uh, what is it about for you and why you do it. On the next slide, uh, again, I'm saying that Next slide, please. Here I'm again saying that you need to be concrete uh, and concise and uh, don't be abstract. So use use words that are um, that are precise. For example, um, don't say this is a, a universal film. It doesn't really mean anything. You know, you you need to say more precisely like. Um, why you think your movie will be appealing to a certain um, type of audience? This is much more much more st strong than than saying abstract uh, terms and and words. On the next slide, you see that you need to define your audience and uh, how to reach them. So uh, this is extremely important when you present your project, and especially in pitches, I, I often see people uh, forgetting this that. Uh, they don't say that their their movie or their project or TV series it's for kids. Okay, so I, I I watch somebody speak for for ten minutes about something that I do not really understand for 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 which audience it is. This is very very important because I as a uh, as a as a producer when I want to embark on a project I need to think about uh, what is the audience because I know my audience in my country. And uh, I can I can know in advance that uh, a certain type of project will not be for me because I cannot find the audience for this project. Uh, again, you need to tell the status of the project and even the, the issues that's on the next slide. 
um, the, the the current status of the project you can you can say that for example um, uh, you know in a puppet stop motion animation for example in a, in a certain stage of development you can say we did not find the the right visual for the puppets yet uh, we know what the issues are we want to convey and express this kind of emotion we didn't find it yet um, our visual artist are is still working on it this is a prototype and so on and um, at the end you you say what the next plans are and, and how you how you want to reach them so next slide please uh, Yes, you could, uh, you could include, uh, if you have it already, you can include a treatment, uh, maximum 10 pages in your present and pa uh, presentation package. Um, you can uh, also include a timeline that would be a, a timeline of your development, a timeline of your financing, a timeline when you, when you, uh, when when do you plan to enter in production, which is also very important information for me as your future partner, that I can see that, uh, for example, uh, if I wanted to work on your project and you want to enter in production in two months, uh, then I know for sure that I will not have the time to gather the financing and you know I wouldn't be able to, to help you. On the next slide, uh, this is uh, another element of the package that you would include. Uh, it's a development budget top sheet. Uh, or, or if you have uh, also an idea of your production budget, you could include that. Uh, on the next slide is an example of such a top sheet of a, of a budget. So these are just the, the main lines without any details. Um, if, if you work with more countries, you can, you can divide it in different columns, like uh, which country is, uh, is spending which, uh, which portion of the money. Of course, you would need to have the total. Uh, in, in different phases of, of, uh, of development, you might have uh, more and more precise idea on how much things will cost. Uh, this is very um, important for me as your future partner to actually see that uh, the numbers that, that that you are putting there are first of all realistic and that they are realistic for me as, uh, as, as your partner. Um, on the next slide I am mentioning the fact that you need to uh, include a financing plan um, and on the next slide, you can actually see uh, one such financing plan for um, for a film that happens to be a co-production between Canada and, and Italy. Um, OK, doing financing plans, uh, it's, um, you could, we could really make a, a, a whole um, lecture on, on, on this. Uh, it's something that you need to learn as, uh, as producers how to how to do them. But uh, but basically, the basic idea is that you include the countries that are in your uh, co-production you include the sources of, uh, of money in each country uh, and the amounts, uh, and you also include the information about the status of that financing. Um, so this financing plan is, as it says, is a plan. So uh, it doesn't need to actually happen exactly that way as you, as you plan it, which is normal. But uh, me as your future partner, in your, when, when looking at your package or listening to your pitch, I can at least imagine uh, how you are functioning, how, how you are thinking about uh, financing the, the movie. So on the next slide, um, I'm saying that uh, if you already have an estimate of, uh, of your production in the later stages of, um, of uh, development, you can include uh, an estimate uh, budget top sheet and also uh, a production financing plan, which is on the next slide. Okay. Let's move forward. Another element of your package would be, next slide, would be the CVs and uh, biographies of, uh, of, your, of your main um, uh, crew, uh, creative, uh, also the producers, um, also the cast. Uh, if, you, if you are doing um, a live action film and you already have some cast um, included, um, I personally prefer uh, short um, biographies like in in a few lines rather than uh, CVs with uh, you know all the bullet points and all the things that you've done since high school uh, I think um, the more concise uh, you are the, the the better for the reader so here's an example on the next slide how we did it in in our document about the puppet stop motion animation uh, you see on the left side the, the biographies of the, of the main main crew uh, and on the right side which is included the, the four co-production companies uh, in a very you know very short uh, description on the next slide 
you see a much more uh, visually uh, mature and prepared um, presentation. Uh, this is from the film um, that I've shown you before, uh, Another Day of Life. So this is how, how you can make it look uh, when you are in a more advanced stage of your project. On the next slide, here are a few more elements. So for example, you could include a marketing plan, um, not more than one page, just uh, you know, perhaps comparing your film, benchmarking your, your movie to, to something that is really comparable. Don't, don't ben benchmark your films with uh, uh, you know, American Hollywood blockbusters, because uh, if, you, if you come from Philippines or if you come from Slovakia, uh, you know, that's not the same market that we know that it's not the same kind of movies that, that we are doing. So compare always your films to, to something that is um, from your region or, or that is really comparable and, and um, similar. On the next uh, page, I'm writing that you should include uh, letters of intent. This is especially important when you already have some financing secured or uh, when you have, uh, so that would be a kind of letter of intent from the institution or the partner, the sales agent or a co-production company, a letter that really writes um, that uh, they are willing to commit, uh, they are willing to commit financially um, or, or, or technically or in any way uh, that you agreed. And also if you have um, important cast on your film, it's always important to, to include uh, letters of intent because uh, if you say that you have Brad Pitt on your uh, on your film, I will probably not believe you. Uh, but if you really have him and he provides you a letter of intent, then you know you include it there, and uh, then then I can believe you that you, you really managed to convince Brad Pitt to be on your movie. Now, extremely important for uh, for animation on the next slide uh, is uh, the visuals. Uh, of course, uh, in animation, this is what we are there for. We want to see uh, the visuals. Uh, we want to see your ideas, um, your concept, and we want to know how much this is already final. So on the next slide, uh, I show an example from, from the document by uh, for this film, Another Day of Life. They had a, a very special technique on the film, so they really take um, a part of the document to explain uh, what the style and the, the visual of the film uh, was, how it looked, how they achieved their style. On the next slide, you can see another uh, another image of the concept. On the next slide, you can see how they present their characters uh, in the in the package. Next slide, please. This is how they present their characters. And on the next slide, you can really see uh, how they go from the concept, from the do documentary images, because it's a, uh, it's a film based on, on reality and it in includes uh, documentary footage, how they arrive on, uh, to, the, to the final visuality of the, of the film, which is a kind of a 3D um, uh, rendered with a, with a 2D feeling, as you can see. So uh, in animation, this, this must be uh, included in your presentation, whether it's a pitch or, or, or a production package, always very important. Uh, I try to speed up a little bit uh, so that we can uh, have some questions at the end. So next slide, uh, this is how you, um, yeah, you can go to the end of this slide so that we see everything on this slide. Um, this is how you would be adapting uh, the, the package um, for example, for, for film funds uh, or, or next, uh, next slide, you would be adapting it for co-production markets. And next slide, uh, you would be taking information from, from this production, complete production package and adapting it uh, for pitching. So um, on the next slide, I please go to the end of this slide so that everything appears on the on image. Yes. So, I will go very quickly uh, about this because uh, yes, one more, please, one more. Uh, this is this is called a SWOT analysis. Um, again, this is something you you can find a lot of information on uh, on the internet uh, about. This is something that comes from um, from business. Um, it's uh, it's when you analyze the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that uh, concern your project. Um, this is. Uh, you would do such an analysis uh, in a situation where, for example, you are looking for financing. So you are really thinking about the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats uh, of your project uh, 
in the stage of finances and the financing and what potential financing partners, what kind of questions they could ask you. And the important to know here is that uh, the strengths and weaknesses are what is called internal to your project. Uh, this is something that depends on, on, on you, uh, but opportunities and threats are external. These are things that someone else uh, makes the decision. Um, like an example, um, going for some kind of money uh, like Eurimage in, in Europe, it's a, it's, a, it's a big prestigious fund. You can try to ask the money there. It's an opportunity for you if you do a co-production to, uh, to be financed by this uh, co-production fund. Uh, but somebody else takes the decision whether you get it or not. So it's an opportunity. I show you on the next slide. Again, please, if you go to the, to the end. Yes, so I show you uh, an example of a SWOT analysis uh, that I did for th this film of Unwanted Things and People, which is a co-production of, of four countries. So on the next slide, if you, if you go please to the end of that slide, yes, uh, here I state uh, all the uh, strengths, uh, weaknesses, opportunities that I could come, come up with. So for example, for me, the strength of this movie is that it's a puppet stop motion animation, which is a strength because uh, it's, it's coming back to um, to fashion more and more and, and these kind of films actually are being successful such as uh, uh, Wes Anderson's uh, you know Isle of Dogs of course you can argument it's Wes Anderson but but he has chosen puppet stop motion animation for a reason uh, it's a film for children which is uh, you know there's a it's a good market so it's a strength uh, it's based on a great book uh, it has a strong theme a high artistic concept so all these are strengths of my movie the weaknesses are uh, that it's produced in four countries, which is uh, always difficult to, to communicate. Uh, it has four directors, so it's hard to keep a unity. Um, you know, it's produced in four languages. So again, this is this is a weakness of uh, of my uh, of my project because it will it will have high costs uh, to adapt into different languages at the end. Uh, between among the opportunities. I state the fact that it's a, it can be distributed in four countries, so that's an opportunity to, to have a, a wide audience. Um, also an opportunity for me is that uh, since we are more co-producers, we have more ideas, we can have more sources. Uh, it can be interesting for festivals, uh, it's a soft money friendly project. And the threats of my movie is that um, the theme can be scary for parents because it speaks about death. Uh, the, the, the style, the risk is that uh, somebody will say that the style doesn't appear to, to children. Uh, um, another danger for my movie can be that at the same time as I go to financing with my film, another better uh, stop motion animation from the same region will come. So that's a, that's a threat of my movie. So once you make this list, uh, you get to understand your film uh, better from you you get to understand what kind of questions people might ask you and you are prepared to answer even the difficult questions because if uh, somebody tells you um, you know um, um, you know somebody tells you um, that uh, your movie uh, i don't know um, will not get financed uh, because it's too expensive or something you can you can explain uh, like no no on the contrary we are actually four partners so we have more uh, sources and uh, and so on and so on. So you can really prepare to to different kind of discussions with your partners. On the next slide, please. Um, you can go to the end of this slide. Um, I just explained very briefly uh, the two types of uh, of pitch. So pitch is basically for me just a, um, a spoken version of your package, like how you communicate uh, the content and idea of your film that is written in your in your package. How you communicate it verbally. Uh, you have two types of uh, of pitches. Uh, I divide it this way: the the informal uh, and the formal. The informal uh, would be, uh, you know, meeting somebody at the networking party where you don't have more than two three minutes just to engage their attention. And um, so, so you need to to tell the content of your package. Mostly, you will tell actually the synopsis or the, the your story um, in one minute uh, or two three minutes. Uh, then the formal uh, kind of pitch is in prepared um, situations um, such as in markets or, or festivals and so on uh, where you know the format. Um, for example, they, they tell you it's five minutes or they tell you it's 20 minutes. Uh, 
such as in cartoon cartoon movie, which is one of the biggest um, meetings for feature films or cartoon forum for TV series uh, in Europe, uh, for partners from all around the world. Um, this is the format that you will get. You will get 20 minutes to, to present your film. Uh, on the next slide, uh, and, and, and you, can, you can slowly go through this, uh, these are eight things. You can go to the end uh, of this slide again, please. Uh, here I, I state um, the things that your pitch should absolutely include. So when you start talking about your project, I really want you to say, first of all, who you are. It's very important to present yourself. And, and if you are two, uh, then, then you present also uh, your other person that is there with you, for example, the director, so the producer and director. Uh, you need to say what's your role on the project so that I immediately understand like who you are. Then I need to know the basic facts. I need to know the title. I need to know the format, uh, the length. I need to know the genre. I need to know the target audience uh, of uh, of your project, so that I I, I put it in in a certain you know uh, package of my of my brain uh, that I understand what what you are doing. You can also mention your credentials if you have any relevant credentials connected to your project. So, for example, if you are doing an animation movie, but you already done one animation uh, feature film before, uh, that's an important piece of information to know that you already have this, um, you know, experience. Then you need to tell me what is it about. Uh, I need to know the world. I need to know the characters, the rules of the universe, and so on. And then a little bit of the story, but again, as I was telling you, the, the plot, uh, this is the part where you want to go as fast as possible. And then uh, I want to see your visuals, extremely important in, uh, in animation. And if you do not have final visuals, that's okay. You show them, you say, these are concepts, these are not final visuals. Uh, if you do have uh, a test uh, animation, then please show it. Uh, we really want to see uh, as much as possible, the final result, how it will move on uh, on the screen, how it will look like, because you can have sometimes, uh, you know, great ideas about the visuality of your project, but then um, you will find out in the development process that you are not able technically to to render it in a, in visualization. Um, then you need to tell me the stage, the status of your project, where you are. Do you already have a script? Uh, do you already have some partners? What is the financing structure? Uh, how much do you already have and how much do you need? And extremely important, always finish your presentation with saying what you are looking for, what is missing, what do you need? This would be, again, included also in the presentation package. You would send it to somebody. Do not send it unsolicitedly. Uh, you always ask people, can I send you uh, the presentation package? Uh, will you have the time to read it? Uh, and, 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 and with an email, you would basically include the, or, or telephone or personally, you would explain like uh, what is the current stage and what you are looking for, why you are giving this package to, to this person. Please move to the next uh, slide. Uh, at the end of this, I will probably probably skip this part because I'm I'm, I'm a little bit short on time. Uh, but um, what it says basically is that uh, um, you need to communicate in your package or in your pitch uh, what makes you unique. Uh, what what is that only only you can give uh, to the to the world basically. Um, so so there are these three terms. One is unique selling point. Uh, what is that only you can offer? The unique buying point is from the perspective of uh, of, the, of the audience, for example, or the partner. Uh, so why why it should interest other people? And a unique artistic perspective is what is your creative and artistic approach that makes uh, you different from from others? These are three ideas that you somehow want to communicate through your pitch or or, or through your package. Um, on the next slide. Um, these are yes, pitching is something that you need to practice. And again, I, uh, as, I, as I've seen, there is you have another session on on pitching, so I will not go uh, in deep uh, into this. But I would recommend you um, practice your pitching by recording yourself. Uh, there, there you can already see uh, some some of the things and practicing it with your with your friends uh, and uh, you know with your colleagues uh, and so on, so that you you get into it. It's it's really something that you can learn. And uh, you can learn that the tone of your voice or the rate and volume of your speech, the articulation of the words, 
uh, and how you learn to to speak into a microphone that's uh, extremely important because um, that's that's often you can see it in 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 co-production meetings or pitching forums that uh, suddenly you have somebody who doesn't speak in the microphone because they hold it like this or like this and we don't hear them so important to learn to speak into a microphone the rhythm the intonation where you put the emphasis uh, on words your facial expression whether you smile i'm not very much a smiling person but uh, this is something also that uh, i would need to learn for example uh, eye contact keeping eye contact with people the, the body language the posture how you stand on the stage where you uh, when you are presenting your project the clothes that you are wearing um, extremely important never to lie so don't even if you don't know how to answer a question that somebody asks you please don't lie because sooner or later um, you know this industry is very small uh, if you if you start to lie people will discover it very quickly uh, and very important is to learn to listen to questions uh, okay on the next slide if you go to the end of this uh, here I um, try to show like how to find the right partners um, so of course, the, the places you should go uh, is, first of all, you should attend workshops. This is, uh, this is as much as you can. I know that uh, workshops can be expensive, uh, but, uh, and often you need to, to, to travel. But uh, also, you will find out that many workshops have scholarships uh, or, or, or you have institutions in your country that can help you to attend workshops. Uh, very important to, to go there. This is where you can find uh, partners. Don't aim for partners that are uh, you know, to work with people who are already um, established, um, you know, their companies 20 years sooner than you. You, you, you want to grow together with, with your peer. Try to find people who are <clears throat> more or less the same level or a little bit higher than, than, than you are. Uh, go to co-production markets and pitching forums. This is where, first of all, you can see what others are doing and how they are doing it. And uh, you also get the, the possibility of, of yourself presenting your project. And when you, you know, start to see uh, what kind of uh, partners you would be, you would like to work with, because you you've seen their projects on the co-production market, and in, it seems to be compatible with what, with what you are doing. Uh, you can ask people that you trust uh, about them, uh, about about such and such company. You can try to find on the internet, you know, things about that company. Try to try to know as much as possible about about your partners. So one last piece of advice. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit late. I hope it's not a problem, but I'm, I'm, I'm ending uh, this presentation with the last piece of advice on my next slide. Uh, would be that, uh, especially in these uh, times when, when everything is moving online, uh, uh, you have the opportunity to, to, to use this new format uh, to be creative. Uh, be creative in order to, to stand out. And this especially applies to uh, animation projects uh, because uh, you are expected to be visually interesting. Um, nowadays, uh, there is this tendency to, to move even the pitching forums uh, online and often in a format where your pitch is actually prepared in advance when it is recorded. So uh, this is actually a great thing for, for people from animation to show their creativity um, through, the, through how, how you prepare your video, how you make it visually interesting, how you use your visuals, how you use your examples. Here I have uh, put uh, an example of a, a short film pitch um, of, a, of a director that I'm working on, on the, on, on the, on the puppet stop motion animation. He was pitching uh, in Annecy uh, this year, uh, a short film, and he has won uh, the pitch uh, competition. And you can see how uh, they work in their creative team uh, with the format of a pre-recorded video. It's it's very nice to see how they used, uh, you know, how how they made it dynamic, how they made it colorful, and how they um, communicated the emotion and the visuality of the film that they are doing through their pitch. Okay, uh, thank you very much. This, uh, that's my last slide. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Here is also my contact if you would like to um, see um, the, the site of my, the website of my company, what kind of projects we are doing. Uh, feel free to contact me if you, if you have projects uh, or if you have questions, uh, anything. I will try to answer as, as much as uh, possible. And I will try to answer your questions now 
as I'm finishing this presentation. So thank you very much for listening. All right, now we are moving on to our Q&A session. So for our first question, is animation the absolute future of mainstream cinema, regardless of genre, given the current circumstances where people are discouraged to gather? Um, I don't know if it's the if it's the future of uh, of, of mainstream uh, cinema. If I understood well uh, the question, uh, is it probably the question is related to uh, to, to COVID and the, the situation that uh, that, that um, it's easier in, in in times of a quarantine to be making animation or certain types of animation where uh, where people can be sitting behind computers. Uh, uh, instead of actually going to a set where a large uh, group of people meet and it's uh, it's not possible sometimes during uh, the quarantine. So um, it is true that um, on my animation projects, for example, I was not touched uh, by uh, the quarantine. The, the, the project moved on, people were working. Uh, it was not that fun because they were working from from their homes and uh, they were not together. Everything was communicated through Skype. But yes, it's possible to make an animation movie in quarantine. It's much more difficult to uh, shoot a film in, in quarantine. So um, I don't know if I understood well the question, uh, if, if this is the future of cinema. Uh, actually, I hope that uh, there will be a vaccine soon and uh, we'll be more or less back to uh, our normal lives as uh, uh, maybe not as before, but um, that we will be able to do uh, live action films still. All right. Another attendee asks, Hi, Yuri. Thank you so much for this session. In packaging your project and pitching them to partners, how do you protect your I idea or story from being plagiarized? Well, um, actually, uh, when, uh, when you go to... Um, when you go to a, to an official market uh, or pitching forum, that's actually a very good way uh, to to protect your IP because once you go go out in an official catalog, um, that's a way of actually protecting your IP because it it, it has been seen by the industry uh, and and you were the first one, so so you have a proof that uh, that that you were the the author of this uh, IP. Now, in a situation where where nobody knows about your project, and uh, you go to speak to uh, to a partner for the for the first time, and and you are scared about the situation of actually be having that idea stolen, well, first of all, you can you can try to get some advice from your lawyer how to how to protect your IP before going public, but. Another thing I would think is that if you do not trust your partner um, that or your, 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 the, the person you are presenting your, uh, your project, if you do not trust them that they could possibly steal your uh, idea and, and film, then probably it's not a very good partner you want to be working with. Uh, trust is really uh, the, the, the key thing that uh, makes this you know, industry work. Actually, you need to find partners that you trust um, and you need to be a trustful partner for, for others. So this is what I would answer. All right. Well, that's a very enlightening answer for our attendee. Next, this is from Jewel Siko. She asks, is it necessary that you know how to do an animation to, do, to be an animation producer? No. Um, no, you, you, you don't. You, I mean... Uh, any project you you start uh, as a producer, you probably don't know what you are heading towards. Uh, you will you will learn on your way. Uh, it's very important to um, to you know take uh, with you people who who know what they are doing, who are better than you uh, ideally in, in in what you want to do, uh, so that you have a strong team of of people who can advise you. Uh, in the things that you don't know. Uh, often with animated projects, what happens is that uh, the technique of the film uh, changes during the development process. I have seen many, many times that um, something that was presented uh, at first as a 3D animated film ended up being a puppet stop motion animation, which 
you know, so uh, you can be experienced in 3D and have no idea about puppet stop motion animation and still decide to go in the direction. But then you need to, to find people who know what they are doing. Uh, and, and, and this is how I, as your partner, uh, will trust you uh, because you have, uh, you have people uh, in your crew who know how to do the technicalities. But of course, uh, as a producer, uh, it's good to know as much as possible. It's, it's good to, to, to learn constantly and, and also to learn about uh, what people in your crew are, are, are doing because it helps you to be a better producer. It helps you to prepare um, the environment for them uh, to, 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 to work in a, in a better way so that you know what, they're, um, what is necessary for them. All right, thank you for your advice and our producers out there. But well, another question here is, in your experience, are feature films easier to green light than a series? What about short films? Okay, um, the three that you mentioned, uh, series, feature films, or short films, um, are very different in, in terms of what kind of financing you will access, uh, what kind of partners you will look for, and what kind of um, platforms you will be wanting um, to present your film in the stage of uh, development. Uh, you know, for a TV series, you absolutely need in some stage of the development of your project uh, to have a broadcaster, uh, to have a, be it either a TV station or an online, um, you know, um, platform uh, or, or, or somebody who, who is actually a broadcaster. Uh, you cannot make uh, and you shouldn't produce a TV series if there is not a broadcaster interested since the very beginning to show your TV series. Now, uh, with a feature film, uh, you will need different partners. And with a, with a short film, uh, again, these are not the same platforms. With a short film in Europe, you would probably go to places like uh, Clermont-Ferrand uh, or NSC. Uh, this is international, so it's accessible also from um, for, for projects from Philippines to go pitching to NSC your short film, uh, there is a platform called EuroConnection, which is uh, specifically for short film. So you can find these places on uh, on the internet if you if you research it. So you would go to 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 completely different places, both to to pitch it, to finance it, and also to distribute it. Uh, short film obviously sounds easier to green light uh, because uh, it's less money. It's a it's a shorter um, project. Uh, everything should be faster. Uh, then a TV series, which uh, which can be really huge, uh, both uh, financially and uh, in terms of crew and, and the planning and, and everything. So, of course, it sounds to me logical that a short film uh, should be done faster. But I know projects of short films that actually have taken 10 years to, to be done, whereas uh, there can be TV series that um, that people have done within one year or two years. So, well, yeah, this is this is my answer. All right, we're now down to our last question. This is from Ronald Gebalaguin. He asks, what can you advise to a one-man band aspirational artists who wants to make their own short film? Yes, well, uh, there are types of short films uh, that are really artist driven and that are especially in animation you you really see short films that are um, moving pieces of art and uh, it's absolutely possible um, it very good films have been made like this uh, that everything has been done just by the artist from 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 beginning till end um, now uh, it's so 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 it's a it's a pers um, really a personal choice what kind of artist are you what kind of work you you want to be doing um, i would generally suggest to people to to find peers and to work uh, in you know in creative uh, groups of people uh, first of all 
the human experience of working with others um, for me personally is very important um, and uh, second of all there are things in the process of making a film uh, there are things that require the full attention of the artist and uh, other things that require full attention of the producer and it's very difficult to juggle the, the two things when you are a one-man show. Also for me as a partner, if, uh, if your project is um, costly and you need a co-producer and you find me as a co-producer, uh, but then you tell me that actually you are alone on your project and you, you do everything, you do production and, and you are the artist, then I will probably say like, wait a second, you will probably not have the time to even respond to my emails uh, or, or to, to deliver me the information that I will need from you as a producer because you will be too much occupied uh, doing the artistic uh, work. The short film that I have shown you uh, that I co-produced with Hungary called Superbia uh, was done by uh, a single artist, by Luta Todt, who is an absolutely amazing woman and artist uh, who who does everything herself from like she, she writes, she, she, uh, um, she designs, she, um, she animates, uh, she edits even, she, she wants to have total artistic control over, over her film and she uses a technique that allows it to, to do it that way. Uh, but she works with producers. She has a, a producer in, in Hungary. Um, I am the producer in Slovakia. There was another co-producer in Czech Republic and, and she uh, trusts these people uh, that they will help her set up the project in such a way so that she can completely concentrate only on, on, uh, on the work, on the, on the visual part of the, of the film. So to answer your question, I would recommend you to find people to work with, be it a producer or at least a line producer, somebody who organizes the shooting for you. Uh, it's, it's always good to work with more people. Okay. Thank you very much for your wonderful insights, Yuri. We appreciate your patience in answering all of our questions. Now, would you like to share some last words for our audience? Well, um, I hope my presentation uh, was not too, too messy uh, and, and, and quick. Uh, I hope you, you, you find uh, or have found uh, information there that can help you uh, to, to, to work immediately on your project, uh, to, to start packaging your, your project. I have seen uh, for, um, I'm working actually uh, this, this week and, and on the next weeks with four amazing uh, Filipino uh, animated projects and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to discover more about them because uh, they are visually uh, very creative, story-wise, they are extremely interesting. Uh, so I really believe that uh, you have not only talent, but you have stories to tell uh, that, that, that are not only local, but that are really um, accessible to, 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 to people around the world. And that um, I know that I was touched uh, by those stories, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, you have a, a lot of potential in the international market. So try to use the information that, that I try to convey you today to, to prepare yourself for this uh, presentation on the international market. And uh, I hope to meet you soon on some, you know, platform or co-production market or pitching forum somewhere and discover your projects. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuri, for this very awesome and informative session. Your pointers on how to package one's project will surely be useful, especially to those in the audience who are starting out with their films. Your examples are inspirational too. To our audience, we encourage you to use these learnings from Yuri and work on your future projects. We're sure that you have a lot of questions, but unfor unfortunately, we don't have enough time. But please let us know so we may share them with the speaker after this session. As always, please let us know your thoughts by clicking on the survey link at our chat box. Again, this is Film Industry Conference Online 2020. Take care and see you on our next session. Thank you very much to our speaker for a very insightful talk and to our dear audience for tuning in. Keep safe everyone and we hope to see you in our next sessions. For more details on FIC, Please check social media accounts on Facebook, 
www.facebook.com slash filmindustryconferenceph Twitter at FICPH1 and Instagram at filmindustryconferenceph Check out the full lineup of public sessions and master classes. For this year's Film Industry Conference, visit our website at fdcp.ph slash FIC.